Hey guys, so welcome to this new tutorial in Grasshopper. So today we're going to see like very quickly a uh, few kind of commands in Grasshopper, mainly without even Rhino, um, which is the series and the range operations, right? So um, those could be found here. So we have series and we have range, right? Um, so let's start with the series, right? Let's also bring a panel here to start seeing if there's anything coming out of this. So by default, we already have the series will produce a series of numbers, right? So 0 till 9, so we have 10 elements in total because the first one is 0, right? But we could specify certain changes here. So the first element in the series is the first number, then um, the steps, right? So every step on the way we would just move one unit and then the n maximum number of numbers. So let's start by saying, okay, the beginning will be zero, that's fine. The um, increment will be, if I put zero, you'll see that everything becomes zero instantly. So the increment, I could just say one or any number really, I could just edit this to be perhaps 5, so. so you can see that we can increase that to 5 and every step of the way we're moving 5, right? You can leave it as a uh, floating point or as an integer, both would work. And then basically the number of steps, this is important that we just change it to integer types, right? So I'm going to also edit this and put maybe 100. Uh, and you can see that number right now zero won't create anything but we can create any number of you see any number of um, values right so that's good um, so that's the series right so let's make less numbers let's say a few like maybe nine right and um, so these are the ingredients to actually build, like the series will just create these numbers, right? We'll see in a second how to link this to, let's say, creation of points, right? But let's compare it to the range, right? So the range, um, that it, as I said, it could be found here in set sequence, but you can just call it by range. Um, the range is, a, it has only two values too. So it says a numerical domain, by default it's set from 0 to 1 and um, number of steps right so what it would do is you give a domain basically a domain is already two numbers a minimum and a maximum and the number of steps and it would divide those two numbers in the number of steps so there are two ways of just really getting to these lists you know um, of series or basically lists of numbers which are these two right let's try to make this range work by inputting, uh, so we can see if this is already kind of doing anything, by default we should get I believe 10 steps, in this case 10 steps from 0 to 1, right, because those are the default values, uh, but let's change that, can we put a slider here, let's see, so the range, you see that we could specify the upper limit of that domain and we would consider 0 as being the minimum and whatever we put here being the maximum, so the interval will be specified with zero being as a default zero, a minimum, and whatever we specify as a slider as a maximum. And we can also say number of steps, I'm gonna copy this slider here, number of steps more or less, right? So that's very straightforward. But what if we wanna just say, well, I want steps, like eight steps, but going from minus 10 to 10, right? So let's get rid of this slider. I'm going to just bring this slider that it has bigger values, but I'm going to call the interval. Um, so basically what we want is a numeric domain. Let's not call the interval then. It's just um, somewhere here. Domain, right? So we need a domain. Uh, between, so here we go. So we have a domain, basically from 2, 
right? So if we specify that our domain goes from 0 to 5, we could specify also that this could be, sorry, the minimum minus 5, right? So we can go even negative. You'll see that we're specifying the domain, right? And the basically the range will actually split that domain in eight values. You can make it more or less, but you will always start in minus five and get to five with a specific number of steps. That's the difference in a series that basically this is an equivalent to a for loop. Something it works exactly like a for loop. We can group things with control G, right? So if you want to just group them and move them around together, right? You can do so. Um, and you'll see that this is a variation of that series, but in this case the range allows us to very easily specify the lower and upper limit. Let's try to, um, I'm going to remove this group for a second, and I'm going to just try to do a point. And Right, so from XYZ, um, I'm going to try to do a point in the matter of a grid, right? So before I know that this point will just create a point automatically, but if we create a series in X, you'll see that we can generate this series, right? But what if we just connect it also to the Y? We have um, basically specified the X and the Y of these points, and we are basically defining a diagonal. So this is, let's say, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and this is the y, right? x and y are being specified. And through a series, for instance, we can easily say cross-reference, and we can create a grid. So this is a way in which you could actually use a series, a point, and specifying the x and the y. But basically what the cross-reference here is doing is saying for each x that has one unit, do one y that has one unit, right? So so this is happening 10 times, but 10 times 10 times, right? So that's why we're getting this grid, and you can basically increase or decrease the grid and decrease the size of it, right? And again, you can group these to just have a cleaner network. Um, so very useful, cross-reference, something that we've seen before, but now we are kind of applying it to a series, which is a sequence of numbers, right? Uh, you could also do it with a range if you want, so that's something you can try. But that's it for this tutorial, and I'll see you guys soon.